So good afternoon everybody, we've obviously changed our location now, we've come out of the studio and we've decided to do a completely different video from a completely different location. So if you want to learn something a little bit about levitation photography, stick around for the next couple of minutes. So today, as we say, we've come out to a completely different location. We're on the beautiful island of Anglesey in North Wales. And the reason being for this is that a little while ago we published a blog about levitation photography, how to kind of shoot it and, and edit it within Photoshop, and it was so so popular it was unbelievable we had like thousands upon thousands of viewers within the first few days of it so we thought actually it'd be kind of quite nice to maybe expand on it if everybody enjoyed that so much that we wanted to do a video that was involved in levitation photography again but also adding in a little bit of conceptual photography as well so levitation photography is something that's born out of kind of conceptual ideas which are not something that you can kind of photograph naturally without a little bit of editing. So this whole video is going to be a whole kind of process. We've got some images already in our minds that we've been saving up um, as a bit of inspiration. But then we're just going to show you, show you how to set up those shots, how to actually shoot it, the camera settings, and then we'll jump back to the studio towards the end of the video and actually show you how to edit them all together so you can create some really, really cool masterpieces. So what we're going to do today in terms of using our equipment and our props, we basically just got a lot of the similar equipment that we've used in previous videos. It's not going to be anything fancy, just a simple little mirrorless camera. There's no fancy lighting. We've got a few props and I've got half of the high photography team with us today. They decided to come out on the road trip and they're going to act as a bit of assistants and a bit of models. So we've got Sophie, I don't think you've met before, Becky, who you've seen in a video previously, and obviously Harriet again behind the camera. So if you're all ready, we're all ready. Just watch us as we go. Let me just give you a bit of an update as to what we've got set up here as it's all covered in sand. But again, we've got a simple camera set on a tripod and this is going to be so important for your levitation photography. It's, it's nigh on impossible to do it without a tripod and you'll kind of see why in a little bit. So that's all set up there. We'll go through the camera settings in a minute just to bring you over to Sophie um, in a custom made outfit. It's absolutely amazing. All Sophie's going to basically be doing is using this stool just to raise her off from the floor because that's the one thing that's going to help us kind of create that floating effect. We did actually spot that there was a bit of a natural elements around here that we could use with the logs and bits and pieces. So if you happen to find things like that um, on the beach already, um, then that's brilliant. If not, something like a little stool could work just as easily. So you may just need an extra pair of hands to do this just with it being a bit of a windy day. Um, having somebody kind of pop a platform on here always causes a little bit of problems potentially with injuries. So we're just going to be a little bit clever and just make sure we've got someone on hand to help. But basically we're going to ask Sophie just to come and stand up on this platform here and we're just going to try a few simple shots. Camera settings are pretty basic, it's really just to get an even exposure. Um, and we're trying to make sure we're also at a similar uh, level plane in terms of our, um, our perspective as well. So we'll just uh, go back to the camera and I'll show you a few settings from there. Right, okay, so just to give you a little bit more detail about camera settings here, obviously your environment will differ, so don't take these as red. But we're at 400 of a second for shutter speed, f11, and our ISO is right down at 100 because it is so bright. It's not really the ideal kind of, uh, uh, kind of lighting conditions to work under this as well, but it's a nice dry day, so we'll try and make the most of it where we can. And so what the idea is with posing here is to try and make Sophie look as if she's reaching or floating off the floor, so she doesn't necessarily have to jump but if she brings her hands up as if she's gesturing in that way and then she's going to focus right in the center so if you bring your hands out and we'll kind of that's it one two three lovely lovely so you can also shoot on burst mode to make this a bit easier so you get more shots you ready one two three go so like we said this shot the second shot effectively is now bringing sophie off the uh there we go, the stool. And you can even take the stool out of the shot itself because we're effectively just looking for an empty background. I say that, I know there's people walking behind us, but don't worry too much about that. If there's not, if you can wait a little bit, brilliant. If not, again, we can edit it out. It's not gonna be the biggest problem in the world. So keeping the camera exactly where it was, we'll just move this out of the way and go back to the camera 
So again, same settings and everything, so don't try to change anything too much because we're basically looking for a blend of the two. You don't want to end up with an overexposed background uh, in comparison to the foreground, so we're trying to keep things even. So that's really the simple methodology. So what we're going to do is just carry on trying that in a few different formats. We've also got a few props with us as well, just to embellish those shots a little bit further. So uh, yeah, we'll just carry on and see what you think. So we were having a little bit of an issue with the lighting before, with the sun being behind Sophie's position, it meant that a lot of her was silhouetted from the camera's position. So we could open the aperture up to kind of counterbalance it, but it meant the background was just pure white and we needed the detail. So what we're gonna do, Becky's gonna use a reflector. So this is a double-sided reflector. There's silver um, and there's gold. We're gonna use the gold basically just to bounce the light that's coming down back onto this side of Sophie's face, just so we can get a little bit more detail in those shots. just to watch out for when trying out levitation photography. I'll just walk you through. As we've got Sophie sat here on the stool, one of the things that is gonna work best when you've got um, a female model is to try and use a long dress if possible. It's just gonna help cover up the edges of the stool or whatever that it's sat on. That's gonna make it a lot easier and look the concept a little bit more genuine when you come to editing. If you actually have the clothing kind of tucked in around the edge of the stool here, it's gonna be pretty obviously something was there when you edit it out. So if you can, drape something over the front of it to disguise it a little bit as well. And again, you're trying to ask the model to hold a pose that is, it kind of, it is conceptual in its sense. They've got to imagine a position that they're in, don't you know, just assume the position that they're sat now. You maybe got to lean them backwards, bring the feet up off the floor as well, because again, it's got to look like that floating aspect. So there's just a little couple of pitfalls that a lot of people don't kind of understand or they don't adhere to when they're trying out this idea and it makes the whole thing look fake. Conceptual photographs are kind of effectively ideas, are born out of ideas that are nearly or pretty much impossible to actually shoot in camera on its own without any kind of editing. So this time we're going to try something with a bit of a quirky perspective. All we've got is a simple picture frame. There's no picture inside of it, no glass, just the outer rim. And we're going to try and create some kind of quirky um, illusions effectively with these concepts. So I'll show you how we set it up. 
So all I've given Sophie is just, like I said, this outer rim of a picture frame. So really, really simple prop. You can pick it up for, for next to nothing. And very, very similar setup as to our levitation photographs. All we're gonna do is just create a bit of a pose here. And then once we've done these shots, we'll move Sophie out of the frame that we did before, shoot a completely empty background, and then we'll show you obviously a little bit later on how to merge them together. finished we've got some brilliant shots it's been an absolutely fantastic day but just trying something a little bit different again we're not using anything fancy in terms of camera work or lighting or anything like that or settings it's all been pretty simplified those images now back to the studio back to our editing suite and we'll actually show you how to kind of conceptualize and create that levitation idea itself so we'll walk you through it step by step with some on-screen directions but I hope you've enjoyed the video anyway if you've enjoyed today's video, obviously please carry on subscribing. If you're brand new and you've enjoyed it, there's gonna to be tons more videos like this, so please hit the subscribe button. Join our community so you can carry on watching these fantastic eye photography videos. If you've got any tips of your own from levitation photography, any shots that you've taken, kind of conceptual ideas you've made, just let us know in the comments, tag us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest, we're all over it. Until the next time, hopefully just in sunny conditions, we'll see you soon.